everybody thanks for watching right now there's a lot of very angry and upset black people in america and around the world but as mad as you are about what you have been seeing on the news and what you have been hearing about with all of the recent killings of black people innocent black people you need to understand that this is all a trap it is one gigantic setup and distraction to keep the American attention away from what's going on around the world. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, why are they killing all these innocent black teens and black people as a distraction? But you have to understand that this plays into their plan. Your response, your anger, what you do next will determine the outcome of their plan. This is a, it's a big crossroads we are about to come to. Now, either we're going to go in the direction that's going to help us out, or we're going to follow their, pan their plan, their path towards disaster. Now, I don't care how mad you are or how tough Tony or how many guns you think you may have, you don't have more guns than they do. The only way we can stop what's about to happen, what they're trying to do, is together, both black and white, period, point blank. They want to set us apart. Because the main people they want to get and what they're trying to accomplish is black people. And I'm going to explain why and how they are going to do this. But you need to understand, first of all, calm down. Understand. Educate yourself as to what they are trying to do. This is a setup. Pay attention to what we have been seeing ever since Obama took office. Ever since 2008. What has been happening in America? We had a series of gun attacks where people have gone into schools and gone into movie theaters and killed a lot of people. What happened after that? They tried to take away our guns. They was trying to impose all these gun laws and take away the guns of America. Why? Why were they trying to adamantly go and take the guns, the weapons away from the American people? They fought hard. Every time the people wouldn't let up, it was another attack and then another attack. And they kept pressing that button, trying to get the guns away from the American citizens. Why? Then we had Oscar Grant get killed in uh, Fruitvale Station. Then Trayvon Martin. Then all these celebrities keep coming out and getting caught saying racial things. And now the racial tension has been building and building and building. Why? What's going on? Now, one of the reasons why they are just recklessly killing so many black people and shooting black people down in the street is because they want to prepare black people and let them know what is going to happen to them if they challenge authority. What's about to happen in America, what they are planning for, all of these shootings and killings of these innocent black people is a warning to let you know this is what you will incur if you question authority. Now, unbeknownst to most people, right now there's an epidemic of Ebola going on in Africa and it is spreading like crazy. It is serious, but the news is not talking about that too much. They are distracting you with all of this black violence and these black people getting killed. This virus is spreading like crazy, this Ebola. And not only that, they say it's a new strain of Ebola. The Ebola outbreak, the CDC is raising its alert to the highest level as it monitors the spreading virus, keeping a close watch for cases here in the U.S. ABC Steve Osinsami tracking it all from Atlanta, where the two infected American aid workers are being treated. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, George. The family of those sick missionaries hospitalized just down the street here from the CDC are asking for prayers this morning. This morning, disease trackers in the CDC's Emergency Operations Center are on their highest level of alert, monitoring the outbreak around the clock. It's a sort of uh, all-hands-on-deck thing now so that we can draw on people who normally wouldn't be involved in this kind of infectious disease outbreak. Fears over the disease causing panic in emergency rooms across the country. The CDC says six people in the United States have been tested for Ebola since the West African outbreak erupted in February. All results have been negative, including that New York patient who walked into this New York hospital with Ebola-like symptoms Monday. 
And the two Americans still in isolation wards at this Atlanta hospital now getting the kind of 24-7 Western medical care a specialist not treating them says just might save their lives. The key here is excellent nursing, frequent vital signs, fixing problems. You have a dehydrated patient giving IV fluids. You have a patient who's anemic giving a blood transfusion. Spain will now become the first country in Europe with an Ebola infected patient. A 75 year old Spanish priest working at a Liberian hospital is now back home at a hospital in Spain for treatment. He traveled inside this medically equipped military jet. In Liberia, this is what's passing for sanitation centers, buckets of water and hand sanitizer. This morning, we're learning more about six stranded Tuskegee University students who are studying abroad in Liberia. Their flights have been delayed for at least another 10 days because of travel restrictions in and out of the country. The university this morning saying that they are in a safe place and that they're all healthy. Right now in West Africa, the worst Ebola outbreak in history is in full swing and is jumping across borders at an alarming rate. Already, it has spread to four countries, Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and now Nigeria. This latest jump into Nigeria is particularly serious since the infected individual carried the virus by plane into Lagos, Nigeria, a city with a population of over 21 million. Doctors Without Borders has referred to the outbreak as, quote, out of control. To make matters worse, there's something very, very important that the corporate media and public health officials aren't telling you regarding this crisis. You'll notice if you read virtually any mainstream article on the topic that they make a point of insisting that Ebola is only transferred through physical contact with bodily fluids. This is not true at all. A study conducted in 2012 showed that Ebola was able to travel between pigs and monkeys that were in separate cages that were never placed in direct contact. Though the method of transmission in the study was not officially determined, one of the scientists involved, Dr. Gary Kobinger from the National Microbiology Laboratory at the Public Health Agency of Canada, told BBC News that he believed the infection was spread through large droplets that were suspended in the air. Quote, what we suspect is happening is that large droplets, they can stay in the air, but not long, they don't go far, but they can be absorbed in the airway, and this is how the infection starts. And this is what we think because we saw a lot of evidence in the lungs of the non-human primates that the virus got in that way. End quote. Translation, Ebola is an airborne virus. Now, I'm not going to speculate as to whether these so-called journalists and public health officials who keep repeating the official line regarding the means of transmission are lying or are just participating in some massive display of synchronized incompetence. But what I will say is that this shoddy reporting is most likely getting people killed right now and may in fact be putting all of humanity in danger. How so? Well, think about it for a second. By convincing people that the virus cannot travel through the air, important precautions that could reduce the spread of the virus are not being taken. For example, the other passengers on the plane that traveled to Lagos, Nigeria, were not quarantined. To put this into context, Ebola kills between 50 and 90% of its victims, so the stakes are very, very high here. This particular strain of Ebola is not Ebola Zaire. This is a new strain, and it may in fact be more dangerous than the Zaire variety, not because of any difference in the symptoms, the symptoms are identical, but because this new virus seems to be harder to contain. Whether this is due to some characteristic of the virus itself or merely dumb luck is uncertain at this time. But the rate at which this outbreak has extended its range is unprecedented. Right now, the question on everybody's mind is whether this virus will spread outside of Africa. Considering the fact that Ebola has a three-week incubation period, can travel through the air, and has already hitchhiked on an international flight, this is a real possibility. There are some who are downplaying the probability of this outcome, and to be honest, I hope that they're right. The simple fact of the matter is that these people are basing their assessment on the faulty premise that Ebola is not an airborne virus. Obviously, we've confirmed that a U.S. citizen died in Nigeria after contracting the virus in Liberia. Um, he had traveled to Nigeria while infected with the virus. Uh, Embassy Abuja officials have been informed of the case and are working with local authorities. Uh, at least two additional United States citizens have been infected. Uh, due to privacy considerations, can't provide more information about who those two are. Um, we have, so the U.S. missions in the affected areas have distributed messages to U.S. citizens regarding the Ebola attack. What? Seriously? Did you hear what she just said? Let me back that up. Let's hit rewind. Let's do a replay. Ebola attack. Ebola attack. Ebola attack. Ebola attack. Ebola attack. Yeah, that's what I thought she said. She said Ebola attack. Ebola attack. 
she's reading from her press statement look at her face she's looking down at her packet she's reading off of her press statement uh, concerning the Ebola and they have it labeled as an attack that's all I could think of because this woman did not just slip in the tongue later on in the press conference she says outbreak but here she says attack which was obviously what was written within her press packet for her to read now did somebody do that on purpose to give us a heads up I don't know if they did thank you very much so the news media will have you believe that one of the deadliest viruses in this world's history has just surfaced and of all places in Africa a virus that is responsible for killing tens of millions of people just popped up out of nowhere all of a sudden and is spreading like crazy now ever since 2009 we have been seeing these in America to my right this was a previously was a soybean field um, and this little new cut road divided this field and the right side of the road was filled with uh, which I thought was portable toilets so I never looked at them that close same in color maybe black but which was an odd color and I was sitting there going over my notes and um, a van pulled alongside of me that turned out to be the property owner and he greeted me and he was by himself and so we had a good little dialogue there and I asked him about the, the field of black boxes what, what were they because uh, I'd never seen anything like that and, uh, and his statement was that if he told me I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred, at that time, he said there was 125,000 there. And they were stacked, uh, he told me, 15 high. I, I asked him uh, who owned them, and he stated that uh, the CDC owned them and that they were leasing the land, leasing his land for storage. And um, he um, said his brother uh, worked with the CDC in Atlanta and had been asked by the CDC to do a three-year extension to place temporary morgues all across the nation. This here was shot a couple of days ago in September 2012 by uh, user Filtered Incorporated. He, was, he, he willingly gave me the permission to uh, do this again like this. So, what do we see here? Uh, what are they up to with all the FEMA coffins? Wisconsin. Yeah, just to how large and how many of these there are. Well, I had to come and see them for myself, basically. who that car was that just passed me a few moments ago. I think there's some property at the end of the road here. I asked a local person here that lived here 40 years if she'd seen any of these FEMA coffins that I was describing. She 
said no. Maybe these folks drive by here frequently and don't even know that these are coffins. Probably just think they're stacks of uh, some other type of uh, container. But as you can see, they're black and long, stacked up on each other. Coming to the end of the corner here. And they got them turned sideways. Isn't that convenient? Right, right for it. So now you can see both dimensions of it, the full dimensions of both of them with the private property tag there. And those are our FEMA coffins. So I found them. Just wanted to see them with my own eyes. And that they're still here. Actually, uh, correct, more correctly, CDC coffins. What the hell is that all about? Why all of these disposable caskets? They have been popping up all over America. Why? So if this new strain of Ebola is new and just came out, why were they preparing for it back in 2009 and probably before that? Now, we have been seeing these caskets. Also, we have been hearing about FEMA camps popping up. We begin tonight with a newly leaked U.S. Army Military Police training manual for what they are calling civil disturbance operations. The Army manual outlines the plan to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. That's right, they have plans to confiscate our firearms and kill American citizens on U.S. soil. This during a mass civil unrest, I guess, shooting innocent civilians perhaps. And it goes on to describe how prisoners will be processed through internment camps. Wow. So there you have it. Our own military being trained for armed conflict with U.S. citizens. They're being trained to confiscate our guns in preparations to process us into camps during civil unrest. And realize that the new economy is to put tens of millions of people, we already have the biggest prison population in the world, in, in, this, in this archipelago, this, 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 this giant chain of facilities all over the country. They take you to the FEMA camps being built by Halliburton right now to house 50 million Americans. They're building enough concentration camps in America by Halliburton. Now, if you go out and you find a pink dot on your mailbox, that means that they believe you'll be a good slave and you're going to go along with the program and serve our international antichrist masters. And that's the problem we have today. This conspiracy is so monstrous, so demonic, that we tell people about it and they say, you're crazy, this is America, it can't happen here. So, we have coffins, we have FEMA camps going up. What's going on? Then, you had a bunch of people all across America posting these videos of convoys of hundreds and hundreds of military tanks and vehicles. People are seeing these tanks and these military vehicles and just thinking, you know, this is something normal. It's not normal when this many military vehicles are just passing through towns. And it's just, this is not just one town. This is different cities across America. If you go on YouTube, you'll find more and more videos showing this same exact thing. Military vehicles, tanks, going through different towns and different cities throughout America. I had planned another closing message, but I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one-world communist government. Executive order signed by President Obama has sparked controversy on both sides of the political aisle. The National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order was signed quietly 
Friday night. It gives the president the power to control U.S. resources. The Rules Committee is going to meet in the House. They are going to come up with a rule that makes it okay for them to do a same-day bill. So they'll pass this rule. It's, believe it or not, called martial law. This would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. There are new disturbing developments out of Washington tonight regarding the president's belief that he has the legal authority to assassinate U.S. citizens. Incredibly enough, it appears that our commander-in-chief actually believes that authority exists not only on foreign soil, but right here on American soil as well. But Senators McCain and Levin have added this legislation, which would authorize the president to declare the entire United States of America, all 50 states and all territories, to be a battlefield, right. even though there's no battle, thanks be to God, going on here. War on terror is different. And that would authorize him to use commander-in-chief authority in the United States to use the military to arrest people in the United States who, in the president's opinion, are enemies of the country. Particularly to hear President Obama claim the power to keep people in prison indefinitely with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. Joining us now is former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Dan, thanks a lot for joining us. What thanks. do you mean there's no such thing as gun control, only people control? Tell me what that means. Tucker, this is part of your ideological ploy by this administration. They're not being authentic with America, whether it's the sequester of health care or the gun control issue. What they do is they manipulate an emotional crisis, a national emotional crisis, to further an ideological agenda which involves, involves the evaporation, the slow disintegration of your civil rights, your liberties, your ability to live and let live. And it's a disturbing pattern that frankly is really starting to get under my skin. The U.S. is funneling money into tracking systems that are threatening to make the very concept of privacy a thing of the past. It could mean people's every move being used against them to keep them under surveillance. The information age was an era nearly everybody embraced. But today's surveillance age, experts say, is a reality almost no one can escape. Uh, David, why does the DHS need 450 million hollow point bullets? Uh, that kind of ammo that they purchased from ATK, hollow point ammunition, as you had explained, uh, it's designed to, you know, tear through human flesh and then expand. It's designed to kill people. This is not the optimal uh, kind of ammo you would buy for target practice. It's more expensive and it's more precise. Do you think this is a sign that they're preparing for some sort of mass civil unrest? So they have an open bid right now, DHS, for even more ammunition for 175 million rounds of uh, 223 caliber rifle ammo. It's almost identical to the ammunition used by NATO peacekeeping forces. So that's very interesting. Uh, are they planning on some kind of widespread economic unrest in the U.S. that would require uh, NATO forces to help us out? Half a billion dollars in surplus military weaponry from the Pentagon, um, which is authorized through the Pentagon's 1033 program. Um, during the late 70s, Congress passed legislation uh, called Posse Comitatus, barring the military from operating on American soil. And in the early 80s, there was an effort to circumvent that in Congress by arming police with military-grade weaponry. And now we're seeing that play out in the streets. People in the inner city in the U.S. have been experiencing this. So civilians in the U.S. are now up against basically uh, military-style policing. The battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. <laughs> the Department of Homeland Security sent to law enforcement agencies across the country warning about the potential for an increase in right-wing extremist activity. It warns about groups and individuals dedicated to single issues like abortion, immigration, and gun rights. Tonight, our focus is on every American's right to freedom of expression and freedom of religion. It's the Christians who are under siege by government officials and anti-religion groups who think Christmas and Christianity have no business in the public arena. The Department of Defense has just issued a a new list of uh, extremists that should be watched. And on that, in fact, number one, hmm, past the Muslim Brotherhood and past Hamas, Hezbollah, number one, evangelical Christians. A pretty scary scene along the Chicago River turns out to be a military training exercise. There was nothing routine that uh, folks reported about uh, seeing the jarring uh, 
uh, as they witnessed uh, the jarring scene of at least three Black Hawk helicopters flying at times in close order formation. Just in a military drill in downtown Miami, complete with these Black Hawk helicopters, elite soldiers and police officers swarming the street. Take a look, swing back over here. This may be involved in this training or not. Again, let me tell you what all of this is that we know of. It's a joint military training exercise involving local police, also military. The sight of Army helicopters and the sound of gunfire created a lot of concern this afternoon in one Houston neighborhood. There were armed men in fatigues, plenty of weapons, and what many thought were real live rounds. So here's the article by Steve Watson. Military helicopters conduct covert exercises over U.S. bank buildings. This is all part of other drills going on to acclimate the public to being attacked by our own military that are happening here in the United States. Here it is. LAPD and elite military units conducted extraordinary counterterrorism training in the skies above downtown L.A. tonight. At one point, they made what appeared to be a drop-off at a park. Within seconds of landing, the helicopter was back in the air. It was a strange sight in the skies over Los Angeles. Military special forces flying a practice mission last night, and there are more exercises scheduled for today. The entire city of Boston is in lockdown in the suburb of Watertown. Police with guns drawn are searching door to door. I mean, we had martial law up there. FBI and all these agents coming in, closing things down, going to people's houses. Mr. President, I do want to get right to the news of this week. Sure. The terrorism in Boston. Yeah. Many people have wondered if it took you right back to 9-11 when you heard it. Well, at first, uh, you know, I was deeply concerned uh, that um, there might have been a organized plot. Uh, I don't know all the facts. I don't think we all know all the facts, but I was deeply concerned that uh, this could have been um, uh, you know, another cons uh And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy theories. They conspiracy theorists. They've been crazy, but now they they're right. Yeah, well, when Geider, it's happening. When Geider said he would be open to the idea of a global currency last exactly. week, yeah. those conspiracy people had said and suggested that for That's years. Right. You're not wrong. Uh, and when massive foreign trade deals are made, they are done in U.S. dollars, which serves as the world's reserve currency. Now the U.N. is backing a plan to change all of that and create a new global currency. There is a global meltdown coming. It is a global depression. And one world currency and one world financial system is the end game. China said last week they want one global currency. France said yesterday or the day before that they want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. U.S. State Department, the Federal Reserve, even the EPA are sending billions of dollars overseas, and many economic and political decisions made in the United States just don't benefit us. They benefit a would-be one world government because of the programs like this and, and, and just the fiscal conditions that we're in it feels like there's a greater sense of urgency to, to to get to that one world government do you feel like the obama administration may actually be hitting the gas rather than the brake pedal when it comes to this to answer your question absolutely i think obama's got his foot on the gas pedal and is going full speed ahead with taking us towards a global government oil looks higher Gold looks higher, currencies look weaker, all for the reasons that we talked about before. I mean, you've got huge wage disparities. I don't know how that inevitably resolves itself. 
Um, it may resolve itself in some type of a, of a global currency crisis. And then if the global currency crisis unfolds, then inevitably you get, uh, I guess, an alignment under a, a global world government, uh, a new global currency, um, and a new world order. If the feds do not stop the wild spending and do not reform Medicare and Social Security, the U.S. dollar will collapse. That means that all of our savings, all of our investments, our homes, and everything else will blow up before our eyes. This morning on Today's Health, a computer chip that could be implanted under your skin so that doctors can quickly access your medical records. Explain to me briefly what the Verichip is and what it is supposed to do. Verichip is a tiny miniaturized RFID or radio frequency identification microchip. It's 11 millimeters by 1 millimeter. It's about the size of a grain of rice. Well, we've got one sitting there by a penny to, uh, to give us a little perspective of the size, very Correct. tiny. You implant it under the skin how? It gets injected, just like getting a shot of penicillin or any medicine that you would get in a doctor's office. It goes in the upper right arm. Uh, implantable human chips. Supporters hail the technology as a medical marvel. You have one in your arm right now. That's, That's correct. Where, where is it? It's in the upper right arm. It's a simple injection process. Finally from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned. The ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. Uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. If you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip, and you have nothing. You can't buy food, you can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what Everything, you sell. everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one world government, controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. Okay, look, the CIA has done in this country what they've done to us is unbelievable. Look at the terrorist acts that have occurred. The CIA behind most, if not all, of them. Okay, so we have the government trying to take our weapons. We have the government trying to start a race war. We have all of these. FEMA camps going up. We have rows and rows of caskets. We have trains, convoys of military vehicles coming through America, all throughout America, different major cities. Then you have July 31st, this year, Obama changed the law that Bush had set in place a while ago. Now he basically revised it, and the law had to do with quarantinable commutable diseases. Now he changed it so that they can detain anybody who they suspect of having a respiratory disease. So Ebola is a respiratory disease. So if they suspect you of having this, they can detain you. So while everybody is occupied with this whole race war, there is an outbreak of Ebola going around and it's spreading. Now, we have already had confirmed cases, I think it was six, of Ebola coming into this country. First of all, why would you allow anybody coming from a country where there was an Ebola outbreak, why would you allow them to enter into this country without quarantining them ahead of time? So the simple fact that they are allowing people to come in here to America with a serious disease that can be passed through the air like Ebola is serious. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to start an outbreak of Ebola in America? Think about it. Now, I live in Sweden, and they are not allowing anybody into this country who is coming from those countries where there was an Ebola outbreak without first making sure they don't have it. Now, this is like a three-week process, but it takes about 21 days for symptoms to show up of this Ebola infection. So 21 days it takes. If after 21 days you're fine, then you don't have it. 
So, the simple fact that they are allowing people into the country is suspect to me. Now, of course, there are going to be those people who look at this and say, well, I don't believe none of this stuff. This is just crazy conspiracy theory talk. Some people actually believe and have faith in politicians. They believe in a whole political system. They believe politics work. We all know that politicians are crooked. They are dishonest, disloyal people. Yet, every four years, we elect one of them to control us into the highest seat in office throughout the world, which is the American presidency. Now, in politics, it's a funny word. You have poly, which means many, and ticks, which mean you know, little blood-sucking insects. So, politics is many blood-sucking insects. I think that's hilarious. Now, as I was saying before, this whole thing is a distraction. Big distraction, this whole race thing. There's only one race, that's the human race. Now, let's go back and take a look at some other distractions. Now, let's think about some. Now, let's go back to 2001. What happened right before the Twin Towers fell? You had everybody was grilling Bush about the, the election. Everybody was like, hey, this whole thing was rigged and, you know, he shouldn't be the president. And then, boom, 9-11 happened and Twin Towers fell. Everybody forgot about that. Then you had Obama. Obama, everybody had the birth certificate scandal and it was grilling him. The news kept talking about birth certificate. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Then you had the underwear bomb on the plane. That happened, kind of took the attention away. But it came back up. Everybody again, birth certificate, Obama. Who is Obama? Birth certificate is false. It's a fake birth certificate. What's going on? Then he up and captures and kills Osama bin Laden. Oh, everybody forgets about it. Bin Laden's dead. Okay, maybe he's a good guy. People forgot about it. Now, one distraction a lot of people did not understand or know about was when Michael Jackson died. Now, Michael Jackson's funeral was on July 7th, 2009. Now, in July, if you take that, you get seventh month, the seventh day, nine minus two, or 2009, nine minus two would give you seven. So that'll give you seven, seven, seven. Now, it's interesting that Michael Jackson has a few jackets that have seven, seven, seven on the armband. If you look at his history album, that big giant statue of him on the armband, it says seven, seven, seven. But that's a whole nother story for a different video. But on that same day, while everybody was mourning the death of Michael Jackson, and everybody was paying attention to all the news coverage about Michael Jackson's funeral, most of the leaders of the world were meeting the Pope in Rome. And this is what the Pope was talking about. Now, the Pope was calling for, he was calling for basically like a world alignment, like a new world order. And he was calling for the leaders to come together to resolve this whole global economic disaster that was going on. And he was basically calling for a new world order. So, who is the Pope? Yeah, he's this religious guy who's supposed to just stand for Christianity or Catholicism or whatever like that. But how is it that this man has the power to assemble all of the world leaders to him? and to tell them something about foreign or American or whatever policy. So how is it this leader of Rome or the Vatican has the power to call the American president and say, hey, this is what you should do? Now, you have to really pay attention to history. When you pay, pay attention to history, because I don't have time to get into this whole thing, I've done videos about it. When you pay attention to history, you'll figure something out. But to start you on your way, take an American Express card. Why is there a Roman soldier on the cover of American Express car? That's for another video. Now, this whole thing has been set up and been in the planning for years. Now, another distraction a lot of people didn't know about happened during the 2012 Olympic Games. Now, there was supposed to be, there was supposed to be a terrorist attack during the Olympics in 2012, but they, they, they fumbled it so much and it was, they left so many signs and clues that people actually figured this thing out. Now, Syria was supposed to attack the 2012 Olympic Games and that was gonna give America a reason to invade Syria. Now, this was in 2012. Now, you can see now today we have all this stuff going on with Syria where Obama's been trying to get in there. But in 2012, there was supposed to be a terror attack there, but 
because so many people like myself and others figured this thing out. I mean, it was so many videos made and they just basically couldn't do anything. So even though the 2012 games, they dubbed it the Illuminati games because it was so much Illuminati coverage throughout the uh, Olympics, they couldn't do anything. Now, one thing I want you to take away from this video, if you don't take away anything, is these people are pussies. Do not be scared of them. Do not be scared of what they are trying to do. The power is in the people. You control what's going to happen. If you wake up and realize what they are trying to do, they cannot do it. You have to be made aware and make other people aware of what they are trying to do. And once the people get out there and voice their opinion about what they have seen, the knowledge they have about what the government is doing with their money and their freedom, the government will, they will back down. They have always backed down. So in 2008, when Obama became president, that basically brought black and white people together. Then during the whole Occupy movement, you know, black and white people joined together to fight against this whole government thing. Now they have to tear us apart. They have to divide and conquer. This is the whole name of the game, divide and conquer. Now this is, this has been set in place for a long time, people. Like a, a lot of people, it's a lot that I'm not going to talk about because I'm trying to keep this as far away from, you know, conspiracy theory talk and spookiness as possible. I'm trying to just give you straight facts. But this has been set in place for a long time. You need to understand that. Now, the whole thing about divide and conquer is to one, you have to, you have to discredit the side that you want to lose. Now, that happens to be black people. Now, for years, we have been looked at as a race who is trying to kill each other, a race who is stupid and just, just want to be lazy and, uh, and just get money from the government. We are contributing to our own downfall. Now, I want you to take a look at something that the wife of the police chief in Ferguson, where the innocent boy was shot at, take a look at something that she said about black people. They are all feral and violent. They murder each other. They murder their unborn babies. They murder white people. They hate police officers and murder some of them, even black ones. They destroy neighbors and entire cities with garbage and drugs. They live their lives off the hard earned tax dollars of other Americans, yet somehow they are the victims. What insanity is that? Now understand that what she is saying it's almost like a script because what she is saying is basically what the media has been pumping out to white America and the world. Everything that she's saying, she is following the script of what we have been showing and what the media has, has shown the world. See, most black people don't understand the way white people feel because white people don't want to admit how they truly feel about black people for fear of being beat the hell up or killed. But the place where they do admit their real feelings about black people and where I think all black people should go check out is on YouTube. Look at some of the videos that are posted and just read the comments about black people and you'll notice that the majority of white comments are all the same. They think all the same things about us. Now me personally, I'm in the trenches on YouTube. Like I go in there and I debate and I stand up and show, uh, show a good fight, a good cause for our disadvantage as black people. And I can factually prove why we are in the situation that we in versus what some white person seen on TV or heard on the news, what they don't know about. So when you go on YouTube, you look at some of these comments. Now, this one comment, listen to what this white man had to say. Now these comments that these people put on YouTube are in response to a video that's talking about the coming race war between black and white people. So this one guy says, ha ha, race war. Too bad blacks are too lazy as a whole to actually mobilize and actually put together an army. They as a race enjoy pleasure too much and we all know it's too easy to sit back and get high and let whitey do all the thinking. Now, this next one is a little bit more disturbing. Listen to what this guy has to say. Okay, so this guy says, this isn't shocking by their very nature, blacks are inherently violent and have sub 80 IQs. Now mix that with the ghetto lazy entitlement culture that exists currently and the government slash media entity 
telling them from birth that it's Whitey's fault for all their problems and this is what you get. At this point, blacks and their leadership base will not be happy until the white population is either dead, corrupted by interracial breeding, one drop rule is true according to them, or when white people are in chains and shackles with them as the master. Whites need to arm themselves and get out of the cities. Avoid the ghetto at all costs, and if you see a young black male or pack of blacks, not just males, but also females, you need to cross the street, and if they follow, then put your hand on your weapon and prepare, and if they come up upon you, don't be a victim. It's much better to put down a few apes rather than become a statistic. Don't let it get to that, though. Avoid blacks at all costs. Get out of the cities. Tell your kids at a young age to avoid blacks because of their violent nature and get your local politicians to be against all of these handout programs that steal from hardworking white folks and put it in greedy, parasitic black hands. Now, that's absolutely crazy, but if you go on to read a lot of these uh, statements or comments from people about this particular video, you'll notice that most of them are positive, but you do get a few uh, people who are very racist. And, you know, some people just don't understand what's going on. Okay, first of all, a woman named Margaret Sanger, she created Planned Parenthood. This is where women go have abortions. Now, it is widely known that this woman was a racist. She did not like black people. She created Planned Parenthood. The first place she put her first clinic was in Harlem back in 1929. She did not like black people. Also, a man named Joel Spangarn. This was another white man. He was a Jew. He created the NAACP. Now, he brought on people like W.E.B. Du Bois, a black man, to help give validity to what he was trying to create with the NAACP. Now, if you remember, if you, if you do any history or research, you know that it was W.E.B. Du Bois who attacked Marcus Garvey and all of his policies. Now, had the movement of Marcus Garvey succeeded, then black people today we will probably be running the world like we used to. So, this Jewish man sent in his then very popular black activist, W.E.B. Du Bois, to help defuse the whole movement of Marcus Garvey. Now, Marcus Garvey back then had over 10 million followers around the world, people who was clinging on to his words and people who understood what he was saying. Marcus Garvey wanted us to take back Africa because he understood how important Africa is how everything is in Africa, all of the natural resources. They rape the hell out of Africa every single day for its natural resources. Meanwhile, leaving the people broke, homeless, starving to death, while they reap billions of dollars and rewards off of the labor of African people. Now, all of a sudden, they have Ebola. If they could get rid of all the black people in Africa, that would make them very happy so they can move their people into the richest soil on the planet Earth. It is 90% African and they have the other 10%, but you might as well split that between London and China. And then you have all these nuisance to them, black people who just are around. And if they ever woke up and realized what has happened to them and claimed what is rightfully theirs, that would be a problem. Now, what Marcus Garvey tried to do was get the educated black people who was back here in America, back there in America, to say, hey, wait a minute, let's go back and educate these African people on what they have and wake them up so we can take back what's ours. But that was shot down, and it's sad that a black man helped shoot this whole thing now, shoot this whole thing down, and other black men today ha has been helping the movement against black people, other black people, and it's sad. So, what is this whole thing all about? First of all, you need to understand something. The American dollar is going to collapse. It's going to fall. But it cannot collapse while black people and white people are running around free because that will cause us to unite. And then we will overthrow the government. It's just that simple. We will win because if the dollar collapse while we are just chilling, and not under any kind of, you know, martial law, Google that word if you don't know what it means, then we will win. We will overthrow them because that's bullshit. The dollar should not collapse. How is that possible? But 
if they can cause something like, let's say, an epidemic or a pandemic of some kind of disease where they would have to quarantine people and everything will have to be under the radar while everybody's in quarantine and under martial law, stuck in your house, then they can collapse the dollar calmly, peacefully. And when everything is done, it can come out and say, oh yeah, well, the dollar collapsed, or they can tell you why this is going on if the, the dollar collapsed, and this is the new currency, and then we'll come out of it into this whole one world currency, which will later lead to the whole new world order. Uh, that's a whole other thing. Also, they want to get rid of poor people. Poor people have to go. Now, what poor people you want to get rid of? Because we have all kinds of poor people, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. They want to get rid of black people, period. And it's going to be easier for you to do that if black people and white people are at odds. So while there's this big race war going on and these white people seeing all these black people getting killed, they're sitting back like, ha, 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 good. Get rid of the motherfuckers. They ain't doing no good anyway. Which is why the woman repeated the slogan. We're, we kill each other. We abort our babies. We're good for nothing. She's saying everything that shows that we are worthless and unworthy of being saved. So what's going on in America and around the world, what has been going on for years, this has been a setup. Y'all don't understand how because you don't do any research. You have fallen into the trap and have been falling. Me, myself too, but I came out of it. And now I'm trying to wake you up so you better listen carefully. We have fallen into the trap. We have all fallen into the biggest trap in human history and they're about to spring it on us. So y'all better pay attention and listen carefully. Now, they have been showing the world for years that this is our culture, this is what we do. This is what black people are about. We are not about family and unity. We're about violence and killing and murder and death and destruction. TV, they get shows like The Big Bang Theory, they get shows like How I Met Your Mother. They get all these shows showing wonderful, loving, and touching moments between white people. We don't have those shows. We had those shows with the Cosby Show and you know Family Matters and other little shows that show uh, black people similar to white people, but showing black people in a normal light to where we are worthy of being preserved, worthy of life, that we are good people and we just want to raise our family and live good. They have strayed away from those kind of TV shows and have given you a bunch of bullshit. WorldStarHipHop.com giving the world all of this bullshit. You promoting all of this violence, just shaking your ass, showing that women are not worthy of being saved. They just want to create babies and create a bigger tax burden on the John Q. White taxpayer. So they have been readying you for, the, for your own destruction and showing the world that you are not worthy of being saved, that you are worthless. So nobody will cry when you are being killed and slaughtered. So now the media, the media is escalating this whole thing. The media, I've shown you before, six companies own all the news media all around America, six corporations. These same six corporations invest in private prisons. So if you watch my last video, then you understand what I'm talking about. So. It is very, very weird that these same corporations who own the news media in America, these same six companies, also invest in private prisons that was said to be built to house black people. That's what they were created for. Now, I, I, I've talked about that in my last video. Now, you have to understand, Dr. King, he led a nonviolent movement. This was simply amazing when you go back and look at the whole thing. Now, me personally, I was kind of, I was, I'm, I'm against the whole uh, desegregation thing. I'd rather us have been on our own, away from white people, and have created our own society and our own, you know, um, our own success without the aid of any white people. Because if you go back to Black Wall Street before they burnt it down. Black Wall Street was absolutely amazing. And that was all black people, that's what we did. That's the power of black unity. If we ever get together, we can do amazing things and they know that. So the whole thing with integration and us, you know, mingling with these white people, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just that we lost who we were. You know, we all had a common enemy and then we got together with our enemy and then we turned on each other. Instead of staying united, and seeing you know what we can do as a people 
and competing with the white people, which is what we should have done. Instead of competing with them, we tried to be like them. We tried to do what they were doing. And that was our downfall and has continued to be our downfall. But as Black Wall Street's shown you, if we ever unite, if we ever put our heads together and got together, the wonderful things we can accomplish. Now, Dr. King led a nonviolent protest. His whole movement was nonviolent, and that's something you need to really remember. Now, with the whole news media talking about what's going on and showing what's going on, it's fueling black people. It's fueling our anger, and that's what they want. They want us to be pissed, and they want us to get out there and protest and riot and get into fights and beat white people up. All that shit is stupid. All that is falling right into their trap, playing into what they want us to do. Now, you have, you have some few, few black people coming out and leading nonviolent protests. You know, you have colleges, black kids just coming out and they doing it the right way. All this screaming and yelling and saying all this stuff. Yeah, you're out there screaming and yelling and saying this is wrong, this and that. Then at the same time, you're promoting violence yourself. Black people, most of you, we are responsible for our own downfall. We are responsible for the way that the black community is. Yeah, it has been a trap, but you have fell into it. You know right from wrong. You don't need a Bible. You don't need a religion to tell you what's right and what's wrong. And you know you have been doing wrong things. So, yeah, this whole thing is a trap. And it's backfiring on them. If you pay attention to what the media has been doing, they have been portraying us as this violent, evil group of people. Black people are nothing but lazy, and, and this is what we are. But everybody knows this is not the case, and a lot of people see this trap. So if you pay attention to what's going on around America, thanks to cell phone cameras, even though the media is not reporting a lot of this, but it's a lot of nonviolent protests going on, and this whole thing is bringing unity between black and white people. And as you can see from a lot of the pictures that are being posted, it's largely white people, largely black people coming together against what has happened. It's not a black-white thing unless you make it a black-white thing. And the fact that the media is poking around at this thing like, hey, this white cop killed this unarmed black kid. Do you think it would be the same uproar if a white cop killed an unarmed white kid? Yeah, people would be pissed, but it wouldn't be so much racially driven. But it is because it's black and white, but it's a trap. And people are seeing this, white people are seeing it, black people are seeing it, and educated people are coming together and saying, you know what, we're not gonna fall for this trap. We're gonna unite and we're gonna go against this media empire who's putting this bull crap out. Because you have to understand, it's not us who putting this stuff out, it's the media who's been putting this stuff out. And some smart white people get it. They understand that, hey, I know this black dude, this is not what he what he's about or his family is about, you know, and they see past this trap. So I made this video so that everybody see past this trap, especially the people who this trap is designed to catch. And that's us black people. So like I said, control your anger. Don't let this what you see on TV fuel your anger into doing something stupid. I seen a video of these uh, uh, black kids beating up this one white guy who came in their neighborhood. I mean, that's retarded. We don't need that. That's giving them exactly what they want. Don't do that. We need to unite against this thing because only through unity will we be, will we be able to defeat what they are trying to do. Now, to sum this whole thing up, this whole thing is a trap. You need to watch out for it. It's weird how this starts to happen when we get a black president in the White House. And people who have watched and listened to what I've said are probably thinking that this is not possible, it's not gonna happen, and they, go, they are gonna be able to run behind Obama and be like, hey, you can't do this to us. And the white people who control Obama are like, <laughs> you silly Negroes, he works for us. Where are all the celebrities at? Where are all these so-called celebrities that you worship and praise more than you praise your own God? Where are they at? You don't understand the power that they have and how much they can influence the whole situation, but they choose to remain silent. Nobody has stepped out and made a big, loud noise about what has been going on because they also work for these same people. Now, I'm nobody. I'm not nobody famous or anything like that. But if somebody like Jay-Z made a video, if Jay-Z made this video, if Jay-Z put a video out like this, you would have thousands of people in the streets with signs protesting what's going on. If Jay-Z and, and uh, uh, Lil Wayne and Drake 
and other major rappers or famous people got together and made a video like this or about anything I talk about and put it out, then everybody would jump on the bandwagon and would be out there. These people have power. So it's very important that the people who run them keep, run them, keep them silent. Now I understand all this information is all weird and crazy, you know, people are going to have questions. A lot of people are like, you know, why black people? Why us? What is it about us? And you have to really understand there's something about us that they know that they don't want us to know. Now me, myself, I know exactly what that is and I understand why 1200 years of slavery. I understand why after that segregation, I understand why after that all this black oppression, is it really that serious? I have black skin, you have white skin. It's much deeper than that and people will understand because they have distracted you with so many things. But it's a lot that's going on that you don't know about and you don't understand and I can't get into it in this video, but I have in others. But what you need to take away from this video is this. Everything that they're trying to do is a setup. It's a trap. Don't fall for it. Stay in your house. Be peaceful. Don't feed into all this bullshit. Don't promote violence. Cut it out. We need to get together and educate each other on what they're trying to do and what's going on. Cut out the violence. Unity is what we need. More than ever, we need to unite as black people and get together and show the world show the world who we really are. We are more than rappers and ass shakers and violent people and criminals who just trying to feed off the government system. We are much more than that as a people and you know that. You know who you are. You know what you can do. You know what kind of talents you have. You know what you want to be in life. But there are obstacles in your way that people have set in your way that you yourself have set in your way. And once you get over them, you will become something great. Nobody wants to live in the ghetto. Nobody wants to be poor or homeless or any of that. We all want to take care of our family. We all want a better life. We all want the same things. But they are trying to show the world that you don't want these things, that you are a monster, and you are helping them by spreading the same message. Wake up and understand what's going on, that this is all a trap. And if you don't wake up, then martial law is going to happen. I don't want to turn on the news here in Sweden and see martial law in America black people being killed and all that. I don't want to see that here because then I'm like, damn, you know, that's that's crazy. But y'all can change it. Y'all can wake up and change the outcome. So we have come to a fork in the road and it's going to be up to y'all to choose which path you're going to go down. One side is success. One side is martial law under their jurisdiction, following their rules forever or being shot in the street and killed for nothing. It's up to y'all. We have to change our perception. We have to change the perception of the American people and the world when it pertains to black people and show them that we are worth saving. We are more than just baby killers and murderers and people who just want to mooch off the system. We are more than this. We have to show people that we are more than this. And you know we are, we are better than this. We are better than what they say we are. Now, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, inbox me. I get a lot of messages, so if I take a while to respond, just know I definitely will respond. And once again, thanks for watching.